Hello out there. We've been away for a while. We wanted to start out with a video about opening up because a lot of beginning students are getting pots that look like this. We got lots of good response from everybody out there watching, especially the high school students at Holt High School up in Michigan. Thanks for using our videos. I appreciate it. If you ever want to see a specific video, send me a message at bclark at funkyfiredarts.com and Tony and I'll make it. All right? So when you have a pot like this, you notice we got this sharp edge right here, a thicker edge over here, and then the thick edge is high and the sharp edge is low. That means that when they opened up, either they had the hole over to the right or left, or the lump of clay was shaking back and forth when they made the hole. So we'll slice this guy off and get a lump of clay centered. And I'll just show you quickly. If you are opening up and your opening is not in center, it's over here. This wall here is always going to be thin, and this wall here is always going to be thick. So when you squeeze the thick part, it jumps up real high. Squeeze the thin part, and it just gets thin. That doesn't really move. So you've got problems there. So make sure the lump of clay is centered. All right? Once it's centered, you're ready to start opening. And this is the, the fun part, the first fun stage of throwing, because you see the symmetry of the wheel, and you get to see it look like a pot for the first time. Once it's centered, clean your elbow and drop it. No, that's a lie. Don't do that. When you start this process, you need a few things. You need a needle tool, like this. You need a bucket of water and hands of steel. Well, you might not need hands of steel, but still, it helps, all right? And it'll actually get you hands of steel. So, once you have centered properly, and get that left palm down there in centering position, L-shaped, firmly down on the back. But it's not going to press on the clay. It's sitting back a little bit. It's going to be the steady part that your right hand rests on. So take your right hand, make this L shape, and slide down your wrist until it locks in. Now, both hands can move back and forth in order to put your middle finger right at the center of the top of that lump of clay. When you feel that clay spinning perfectly around the pad of your middle finger, and your index finger jumps up on top to help, start pressing down. At no point does this wrist leave my other arm. Okay, I don't want to jump up and then guess and put my fingers down. I want to keep this wrist down on my other wrist so that my fingers slowly press and open up the top wide. So at this point right here, stop the wheel, take your needle tool, and press straight down through the lump of clay. Then slide your hand down there until your index finger touches the floor and lock it in place right there so that when you pull the needle tool out, you see the thickness of your floor. You want about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch, any thinner than that, and when you wire through, you might cut it. Any thicker than that, you might have problems in the bisque firing or you might get an S crack. When you have that depth, go ahead and lock your hands in this curled position. So we'll turn this to the side so you can see a little better. My hands are locked in place. I'm gonna curl that finger and it's gonna sit right on the floor. And then both hands together are gonna slowly pull back toward my body. So in practice, it looks like this. Fingers inside, I curl it back toward my body, and then both hands work together to move that clay back. Do this slowly with good control, and then freeze and slowly let go. When I do this, I'm setting the width of my pot, all right? I don't want this opening size to change the entire time I'm pulling. So if I'm making a cup, this is a little bit too wide, or a mug, possibly too wide as well, but for a nice strong cylinder, this is probably perfect. I want to look at these outside walls, and if they're flared out past where they're connected to the bat, that's trouble. So you can get your hands in there and squeeze back in. Once I have a nice set so that I'm open and I've got a good slant on these outside walls, I'll take a sponge and compress the floor. You don't need a sponge. You can also do this with your finger. Just make a divot in the center and slowly, with light pressure, press out to the wall and let the outside edge of your middle finger bump the wall so you get a nice, sharp angle in there. 
That compression helps out a lot in the firing process to make sure you don't get a crack in the floor. Once that's done, I'm going to compress the rim and I'm set to start pulling. Now there are lots of different ways to open up. You can try with your thumbs, you can do it one-handed, you can push away from your body. You'll see potters do all kinds of different openings. The reason we picked this one is because whether you're using a small lump of clay or a larger lump of clay, you can adjust this hand so that you don't have to change techniques depending on the weight of the clay. All right? So try this one out. Remember, wrist down, fingers locked. Press down like this, curl the finger, and then both hands pull slowly back toward your body to open that up. Try it out. We hope you have success. Make sure you send us some pictures if you're doing this well. Uh, and make sure that you send us information on what videos you want to see. All right? Have a great time, and thanks again. What's that? <laughs> what Vogue. 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 Greta Garbo. I don't remember the rest.